bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah Almighty. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jehovah Almighty. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jehovah Almighty. King of glory, the ancient of days, the most high God, the Almighty, we worship you. We give you all glory and honor for everything you've done for us as individuals, as families, as your church. We give you all glory and honor because without you, we won't be alive today. So we bless your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. And even as we proceed, Lord God Almighty, into your word, we pray that you will send your word to all your children. Amen. And as it goes forth, Lord, let it bring healing powers to us. Amen. Physically heal us. Amen. Mentally heal us. Amen. Spiritually heal us. Amen. And please, Lord, let it be well with our nation. Amen. Let it be well with your world. Amen. Please, Lord God Almighty, temper justice with mercy. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We will be continuing with our series from lockdown to leaping up. Our foundational text as you know, is Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. We won't read that again since we've read it several times, but we will want to read a supporting text in Genesis, chapter 28. Genesis 28, from verse 10 to 22. Genesis 28, 10 to 22. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. He must have been really tired to use stones as pillows and still be able to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, 
and we keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and we bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other than other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stones which he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Los at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be... God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. The last time we spoke about leaping up from lockdown, we discussed the issue of how high can I leap? And we told you that if it is the Almighty God that is lifting you up, the sky does not have to be your limit. It is heaven itself that will be your limit. Now I'm sure by now you'll be wondering, what has this passage got to do with leaping up from lockdown. Well, uh, I will go straight to the point. Number one, before you take off, you must consider landing. If you are going to fly an aeroplane, it is very easy to take off. As a pilot, they will tell you, taking off is not a big deal. You line the plane on the wrong way, start the engine, put the engine into full force, set the ball rolling. And when the plane gets to a particular speed, you pull certain... Uh, whatever the pull pedals or whatever it is, joystick or whatever, and the plane will take off. But landing is an entirely different story. And before you take off, before you begin to leap, you must consider landing. Why? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8 says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. It is far, far better to remain ordinary than to become an ex-successful. If we just stay in your quiet corner, an ordinary person, nobody knows you, you have made no impact anywhere, that's better than to used to be successful. Never owning a car, joining buses when you want to move from one place to the other, thanking God for life, it's better than to use to have your own car, 
to used to have a driver driving you and then all of a sudden to have no more vehicle to go call your own. When you go to the bus stop and they, 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 they step on you and you say, ah, can't you see you are stepping on me? They will say, eh, you don't want to be stepped on. What are you doing at the bus stop? You will say, it's not your fault. It's my prayer for every one of you listening to me today. You will never be an ex-champion. Now, why must you settle the issue of landing before you take off? There's a very popular saying that says, one of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is to be successful before they are ready. One of the most dangerous things that can happen to any human being is to be successful before they are ready. And the Bible is full of examples. Let me take one or two. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26 from verse 3 to 21, 2 Chronicles 26 from verse 3 to 21, tells us the story of a boy who became a king at the age of 16. He was 16 years old when he became a king. And things began to go very well. Prosperity here, power here, everything. But because he wasn't ready before he succeeded, he ended up a leper. I'll take another example that I'm sure you are familiar with. The story of Ephraim, Genesis chapter 48, from verse 8 to 20. Genesis 48, from verse, 18 to, from verse 8 to 20. When Joseph brought his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, to his father for a father's blessing, and he placed Manasseh, the firstborn, where the right hand of the father would land, Ephraim where the left hand would land, because Manasseh is the firstborn, the father crossed his hand, placed his right hand on the head of the younger, the left hand on the head of the older. When Joseph tried to intervene, the father said, I know what I'm doing. The younger is going to be far, far greater than the elder. He blessed them. By the time you get to Deuteronomy 33, verse 17, Deuteronomy 33, verse 17, the Bible tells us that Ephraim has prospered ten times more than his brother. But the prosperity entered into his head. The prosperity became an idol to him. So by the time we got to Hosea chapter 4, verse 17, Hosea 4, 17, the Almighty God said, Ephraim has joined himself to idols. Leave him alone. But then God said in Hosea chapter 5, verse 9, Hosea 5, verse 9, Ephraim shall be desolate. The Bible says in Luke chapter 14, from verse 28 to 30, Luke 14, from verse 28 to 30, that before you build a house, you sit down and count the cost. The taller the tower is going to be, the deeper must be the foundation. Before you begin to leap up, before you begin to plan for great things, mighty things that will come after this lockdown, please think Why am I saying this now? As a matter of fact, if there is a way of preaching this sermon just to my own children alone, that's what I would have done. Oh, not because I'm selfish. But occasionally there are things you say to your children that will annoy outsiders. And you, I keep on saying, but I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to my children. But now lockdown has made the door open to everybody. 
Beloved children, success is coming your way. Yeah. And I mean big one. Yeah. You say, how do you know, sir? Well, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Say, say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. Colossians 1, 27. Colossians 1, 27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then a prophecy came through one of my sons that I have known for a long time to be without any doubt a prophet of the Most High God. And the prophecy is based on Judges chapter 14 from verse 5 to 14. Judges 14 from verse 5 to 14. It is the story of Samson who wanted to take uh, one of the daughters of the Philistines for a wife. As he was going, he was attacked by a lion. He tore the lion into two, went uh, to the in-law's house. Some days later, when he was passing by, he saw that oh, some bees have already made a house inside the lion, and they have produced some honey. So he took some honey from the carcass of the lion, and it. When he got to the in-laws house this time around, he threw a redo to those who came to rejoice with him and said, could you tell me the meaning of this redo? Out of the eater, food has come. Almighty God spoke to this, my son, and said, out of the lockdown, mighty breakthroughs will come for his children. Yeah. Now, let's now go back to our text. You know, the original, the text, Genesis 28, from verse 10 to 22. Jacob was running away from home after receiving the blessings from his father. And some people will say, how can now God meet somebody like that on the way and promise him tremendous blessings? They will say, how can God bless a thief who had just stolen his, father's uh, his brother's blessing? Where well, to start with? God said, I am talking to you as the God of your father Abraham. God took him all the way back to the root. Who is Abraham? Now, Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12 verse 1 to 3. That's the man that God called. That's the man that God promised that I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you, etc., etc. So God says, so this young man who was worn out from running from his brother and said, hey, I'm the God of your father Abraham. He didn't even start with Isaac. He said, the promises I made to Abraham, I hand it over to you. Now, thank God, in Galatians chapter 3, from verse 13 to 14, Galatians 3, from verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, those of us who are Christians are also of the seed of Abraham. And the blessings of Abraham will be ours. Number two, Jacob didn't steal. He bought his brother's blessings. And you need to pay attention to that because it's important. You see, in the olden days, there is what they call trade by butter. In those days, they didn't have uh, currencies and don't have. So if you have potato and I have a lamb, you want meat. 
I want potato. We exchange. You give me potato, I give you my lamb. This is called trade by butter. In Genesis 25, from verse 29 to 34, Genesis 25, 29 to 34, Esau said, I want food. Jacob said, I want the birthright of the firstborn. Is it okay by you? Uh, Esau said, no problem. Who, he said, who cares about the birthright? Just give me food. So, this man didn't steal. He bought. And the word of God is clear on the issue of trade by butter. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 Luke 6, verse 38, he said, You give, you shall be given. Trade by butter. Proverbs chapter 11, 24 to 25. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. He said, The liberal soul shall be made fat. You trade by butter. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3, Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3 says, if you load the cloud, finally it will give you back rain. John chapter 3 verse 16, John 3 verse 16 says, oh God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever Believer in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. God had only one begotten son. He wants many more children. So, trade by butter. He released his only begotten son to the world. And today, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, Romans 8, 29, the only begotten has become the firstborn of many brethren. So where is the trade by butter here? God said to this young man, I want to be your partner. I will be with you. I will prosper you. Uh, you will be great. What do you say, young man? Ah. <laughs> the young man says, you offer me that? I promise you, everything you give to me, I will pay my tithe. I will be like my dad. Because I know from my dad, that in Genesis chapter 14 from verse 17 to 20, Genesis 14 from verse 17 to 20, my dad paid tithe to the king of Salem. So when you hear people talking about tithe being the law, Moses wasn't born when Abraham gave tithe. He wasn't born when Jacob made a vow, I will pay my tithe. Now there are those who will say, of course, everything that is in Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 11, Malachi 3 from verse 8 to 11, they will tell you, oh, no, 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 that's under the law. God was speaking only to the seas of Abraham. No argument. Except that when you now read Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, Galatians 3, verse 29, the Bible says if you are a Christian, then you have the seed of Abraham. So whatever is true for the seed of Abraham is true for me. So Jacob said to God, let's be partners. I agree with your offer. If you just be with me, you do what you have said, you prosper me, you take me high, 
I will also be a very good boy. And then what happened to Jacob? Let us see the result of that lead to discussion. When you read Genesis 32, from verse 9 to 10, Genesis 32, from verse 9 to 10, when he was praying on his way back home, he said to God, when I was crossing this place, the last time I was crossing this place, I had only my staff with me. That's all I had. Now I'm returning with two bands. I have good news for someone listening to me today. You enter this lockdown with nothing. By this time next year, as my God lives, you won't even be able to recognize yourself. Amen. How did it happen? Well, Genesis chapter 30, from verse 27 to 43. Genesis 30, 27 to 43. Laban, who was a number 1419 man, said to Jacob, after he had dribbled him here and there over the issue of who to marry, who not to marry, the boy wanted to marry one, Laban made sure he ended up with four. Funny fellow, Laban. He now said to Joseph, uh, to Jacob, what, what, would you, what do you want to be your wage? Just tell me what you want me to pay you for serving me. Because since you came, things have been picking up mightily here. <laughs> and so we said, let us reach an agreement. Every animal that is born, that is either speckled or, or, or uh, ring streaked or spotted, eh, let that be my salary. The one that comes normal, We'll leave to you. He said, I agree. <laughs> what he didn't know, according to Genesis 31, from verse 1 to 13, Genesis 31 from verse 1 to 13, is that God had already shown something to Jacob. He said, any time the animals conceive, he will have a dream. And he will see that the male animals fertilizing the females are either spotted or speckled or ring straight. God showed him that in visions. And so the boy practicalized what God showed him in vision. Anytime the animals come to drink, and they, he knows that uh, they are about to be pregnant, he will get some poplar trees, mix <laughs> spores and, and strakes and everything, and lay it before the animals. Do you know that if you make God your partner, every night you sleep, he will show you ways of doing business that will baffle the world. He will show you what to do. All you need to do is wake up and begin to do it. I'm sure you've heard the story of one man who was a manager in a place of work and said, Almighty God, uh, for how long am I going to continue to say, yes, sir, yes, sir? I pay my tithe, and God said, no problem. I give you just one idea, just one idea. I want you to begin to roast peanut. But when you are roasting your own peanut, add honey. Nobody did it before him. He could have asked God, honey with peanut? Some years back, when a president of America was being sworn in and they, they had a party for the president, 
it was the, the roasted peanut of this man that they served there. By the last time I heard about him, he already had two private jets. Just one idea, one idea. Oh, you said that's far off. I know one young man. You've heard me say this one before. He had his uh, qualifications, but he couldn't get a job. And God gave him an idea. This boy was a very good cook. So he got some money together, got one little corner on the street of Lagos, and began to roast akara, bean cakes. Out of curiosity, people will stop and say, what's going on here? They will buy the bean cake and, ah, ah, this is serious. And they began to tell their friends. From the money he made, he bought one motorcycle. After some time, he bought the second one. The fellow who had no job become <laughs> an employer of labor. I can tell you other stories of people who chose to make God their partner and they get divine inspirations that turn them to something entirely different. Consider Jacob before I begin to round up. When Jacob came to Egypt, in Genesis 46, from verse 26 to 27, Genesis 46, from verse 26 to 27, the Bible said, he came to Egypt with 70 souls, including the children of Joseph that were already there. By the time he left Egypt, he was locked down in Egypt for quite a while. By the time his children left Egypt, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 37, Exodus 12, 37, there were 600,000 men, not counting children. I don't know how great you are now, but you can become a nation. God can multiply you so mightily that the world will say, we've never seen this kind before. However, I need to warn you before you say, ah, all right, I understand. I will make God my partner. You need to understand that if you make him your partner, he will not be a junior partner. He will be your senior partner. If you allow him to step into your boat, <laughs> he will become the CEO. If you don't believe me, ask Peter. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. You allow him to step into your boat, not only will he prosper you to such an extent that you'll be frightened, he will move you to higher grounds. I will close with just one story that you've heard before. Several years ago, I was visiting America, attending a conference. And they, on the night, particular night that in the conference, they, the, the, the organizers wanted to raise money. And before they started, there was this young man who called his wife forward and they went to the altar and he asked the organizer to give him permission to speak. And he announced to us, he said, brethren, please, I want you to do something today. There are about 17,000 of us there. I want you to give generously. And the reason I'm asking you to give generously is because whatever all of you give, that's what my wife and I will give. I will say, what are you saying? He said, I will match everything you give, dollar 
for dollar. And we also are, <laughs> this man is finished. Uh, those who didn't want to give now decided we will give to make sure we get him into trouble. God have mercy on Christians. 17,000 people gave beyond their normal giving ability. At the end, he said, we should, we should please wait because he wanted the whole thing counted. They counted it by, I mean, several people joined together and they counted it, and they counted $3.5 million. We said, uh-huh, you're in trouble now. He took the microphone and said, brethren, is this all you can do? So I said, this man must know something I don't know. <laughs> At the end of the program, I make sure I cornered him. Sir, what is your secret? And he said, five years ago, I started a business with $500. And I said to God, you will be my senior partner. I will not insult you with 10%. I will take the 10%, you take 90%. But it's up to you. It's your business. He said, the last year, my company made a turnover of $50 million. He said, I know what I'm doing. I said, thank you very much. I don't need to say more than that. Because some of us see the glory, we don't know the story. Some people see how the Almighty God has been gracious unto me, and they like to open their mouth and say all kinds of things. It's none of my business. I don't need to answer you. I just keep on riding high with my king. I'm talking to my children. Oh. <laughs> So the others should not be angry with me. <laughs> Before you take off, consider your landing. Who will be your partner? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Like I said, if you are going to invite him in, into your business, it will not be your junior partner. It will be your senior partner. As soon as he comes in, he will take over. And those of you who have not even surrendered your life to him, before you ask him to come and be your senior partner, you better surrender to him now. When he comes in, when you call on him to be your Lord and Savior, he won't be Lord at all unless he will be Lord of all. If you say, save my soul, take over my life, he will take over everything. You will be coming under an entirely new management. His word will become your law. Whatever he says, you must begin to do. So think deeply before you say, Lord, I surrender to you. But let me assure you, if you surrender to him, you will never regret it. So those of you who are listening, and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, please go ahead, call on him now, and say, please come and be my Lord, come and be my Savior. I agree to serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, let us intercede for these people for just one minute, that the Almighty God will receive them, will save their souls, and bring them into the family of God, and give them a new beginning. Intercede for them for one minute, and then call on the Almighty God yourself, and say, Father, I surrender all. Be my senior partner. Control everything I shall do from now. Every project, every business, everything I shall do from now. Be my senior partner. 
thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, and my God, once again, I want to thank you for your word, and I want to thank you for all your children who have heard the word and have made up their minds concerning you. I'm asking for those who are just surrendering their life to you today that you please receive them, Amen. save their souls, Amen. let your blood wash away their sins, Amen. be the Lord of all in their lives. Give them a brand new beginning. Amen. And please, Lord God Almighty, as many as will say, Lord, be my senior partner, within a year, embarrass them with your blessings. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that the higher they go, let them be drawn closer to you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. What a wonderful message. And I believe somebody there will go better, will go higher in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our lives will only be getting better and better in Jesus' mighty name. Our garden together will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Our daddy has told us a, a lot of story about giving. And I know you heard everything. And we don't need another sermon before you give your offering today. Especially this time around, when you give your offering, the Lord will remember you. According to Psalm 20, in the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob will defend you. But why you don't give offering, what will defend you? I pray you will not lack in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything you need to give sacrificially, God Almighty will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Say to somebody, it is never too much to give unto God. So keep on giving, oh. It is offering time. Shall we please rise up with wonderful offering? Especially something that you are not giving before. It's a special day with this kind of message that we have had. And I know it's not going to be in vain in Jesus' name. Quiet, please. Give Jesus a dance offering. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Nara Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I want all people all over the world to know that this for this special convention, the theme of which is wonderful, I'm going to be on the following stations that you will see on your screen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shall we please pray from that same book of Psalm 20? The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Lord God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee air from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. 
grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we declare and declare your offering will be acceptable in Jesus' name. By this time, next time you are given, it's going to be double. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. Ah, the message has been so awesome today. And I want us to take this chorus together. The chorus is in tandem with the message that we have just received. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on earth womb stable where love and joy and light above Lord plant my spirit on higher ground one more time Lord lift me up my sacred bonsa rika yabosa ze 